Rifleman. Starring Chuck Connors. to see us. Maybe a little dance to make you feel better. <laughs> well, you wasted 60 cents worth of cartridges and you never hit them once. That's real lousy shooting, you ask me. Oh, uh, yeah? Bet you a dollar I can shoot the buttons right off his coat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, come on, let's have us a drink. I got a thousand miles of trail dust in my crawl. You men about ready to get paid? Hey, it's Keeley. Hey. Keeley with the money. He's all slicked up. Hey. Hey. Sore eyes. We've been waiting for you for six hey, months. Yeah, man. Did you make a deal for the herd, Thank Keeley? You. Yeah, you men had a hard trip. You deserve a good time. Here, go to it. Out of my way, you cow chasers. I'm going to tear this down apart. Today? I think so. Well, you'll do fine. Just remember, sit easy and think straight. And Mark, you keep out of trouble. I'll try, but sometimes I just can't help it. Yeah, I know, but let me give you some advice. Yesterday, you butted into an argument between Jeff and Skinny. Now, if you want to keep out of that kind of trouble, you just mind your own business. I'll try, Paul. All right. now, I've got a lot of chores to do in town. It'll probably take me till about four. If you wait, I'll come by and ride you back home. I'll wait. <laughs> Okay, goodbye. Good morning, Lucas. Be right with you. Good to see you again. How's Mark? <laughs> well, outside of carrying on a running fight with an English grammar book, he's fine. I need a few supplies, Willie. Here's my list. He better add a bag of hard candy to it. Mark didn't ask for any, but there are some things a boy wants that go without saying. Never met a youngster yet that didn't have a sweet tooth. Dan used to be a great one for candy. His tastes sure have changed since he came back. Is he around? Working in a general store with his father is too dull for him. He's got himself a new job. Acting Marshal of North Fork. Oh? Where's Micah? Had some business to attend to up north. He swore Dan in as temporary deputy before he left. Well, I don't think there's anything to worry about. He can take care of himself. Like you said, it's only temporary. One day as Marshal may be too long. Aren't you laying it on a little heavy, Will? I hope so, but I'm afraid not. Dan seems to be using a job just so he can prove himself. How do you mean? Ever since he was dropped from West Point on account of his eyes, it's been in his crawl that he has to show everybody that the Academy was wrong. He's just as good a man as he ever was. Yeah, I don't think you have to worry too much. Everything will work out. Got a bunch of Texas cowhands in town. He's on the trail three months and spoiling for a good time. Dan's been riding herd on him pretty strong. Maybe he's got good reason. Oh, they've been acting up some. It's mostly high spirits. At least it was that way until Dan started pushing them. Now their tone has changed, and they're deliberately making trouble. 
Well, I don't like to stick my nose into things that don't concern me. But if you want, I'll have a talk with Dan. I was hoping you'd say that, Lucas. He always thought a great deal of you. I hope he still does. <laughs> Better, too. And anyone faster in North Fork? Now, now, North Fork doesn't cover much territory, son. If you'd made that claim in Dodge City or Tombstone. Is there something I can do for you? No, I don't think so, Dan. I just dropped in to see how you were getting along in your new job. Oh, couldn't be better. I had uh, a few problems at first, but I'm getting things under control. Oh, problems? Nothing to worry about. Some Texas cowhands thought they were going to take over the town. I just had to show them that they were wrong. Man who wears a badge has a heavy responsibility. Yeah, he sure has. Now, well, Dan, I always thought the best way to enforce the law was a firm hand on a slack rein. That way you got control and no one feels the bit in his mouth. Well, I can't say as I agree with you, Mr. McCain. The way I look at it, you just got to prove to them that you're better than they are. And they'll fall in line. I see. Could be you're being a little too tough in these comments. After all, you're not dealing with a bunch of West Point plebes. Thanks for the advice, but I'll handle the situation my way. You're the marshal. At least till Mikey gets back. Look, uh, I'll walk a little ways with you. I promise to talk about something else. Talk about anything you like, Dan. He's just come out, and there's someone with him. You ready? The rest of your men know what to do. All right. He's close enough. Dealing. We got no fight with him, Sammy. Kid got what he deserved. Could have been worse. Come on, Marshal. Cowboys are not going to get away with this. They wouldn't have gotten away with it this time if you'd been on your toes. You should have noticed the first man wasn't drunk. Well, he looked drunk to me. His eyes were too clear. Mistake number two, the fellow on the floor. Dead men aren't tense. This one was primed for action. You think there'll be any more trouble, Lucas? No, I don't think so, Willard. They've had their satisfaction. What Lucas says makes sense. My advice is to leave him alone from now on. 
Yang and saddle tramps beat up the town marshal, and all you can say is leave him alone. I think I was wearing this badge for my own benefit. Are you? Another thing, McCain, I can get along without any help from you. He sure is bent on doing things the hard way. Ryle cleaned down to his boot heels. Hard-headed as a pine board knot. Well, Dan's an amateur, trying to do a job that calls for a professional. Hope there's no more trouble. It's not very easy trying to bring up a boy by yourself. It's hard enough trying to be a good father. But, Luke, you just don't know. Being both mother and father is tougher than driving a mule team across the desert. How did you get all the way out here from Missouri? Drove across the desert with a mule team. Just thought I'd ask. I've tried my best. I really have tried. But somewhere along the line, he, he got away from me. How old was Dan when his mother died? Ten. She had such hopes for him. Kind of wanted him to be a doctor, a teacher. Anything that didn't have to do with guns and fighting. Well, if she was still alive, I bet she'd be proud of him. Oh, I know her. I didn't say she'd be proud of the way he's acting today. She'd be proud of him because he's her son. <laughs> Women are just naturally proud of their own flesh and blood. She tried to understand his hurt, trying to make up for his bad eyesight. Like it was her own hurt. Luke, I'm sorry. I forgot you were bringing up Mark by yourself. Well, maybe that's why I have kind of a special liking for Dan. He's been growing up the hard way, and well, I think he needs a little extra understanding. Treat a good gun. Well, maybe that's the way he uses it best. Well, of all the... Hey, will you look at this? The order goes into effect exactly one hour from now. I'll be waiting on you men in my office. Marshal. As far as I'm concerned, you'll be waiting till the seat of your pants wears out. I ain't taking off my gun belt for nobody. Well, if you don't, I'll remove it from you personally. You're welcome to try. Law says until 12 o'clock. I can wait. I'm clearing the first shot at him. Uh, this is my turkey shoot. Come on. I'll buy us a drink. said never did read too well especially signs i'll give you one more chance take off your gun belt you ain't man enough to make me dead. 
You killed a better man than you'll ever be, kid. It was his own doing. Should have turned in his gun like the law said. I'm still wearing mine. There's been enough gunplay already. I'd say that was a matter of opinion. You finally got what you wanted, didn't you, son? What's that supposed to mean? You've been pushing my men ever since they rode into town. All they had to do was obey my orders. I don't know what you're trying to prove, kid, but you ain't proved it yet. Take care of Sandy. You know, I'd better have a talk, Dan. Keely Thompson has killed more men in the years you've lived. I saw him in action in Dodge City. He's good. His guns don't scare me. I carry a couple, too. When a man wears twin guns, Dan, he's usually bragging. Thompson is the exception. He's a fast draw and a dead shot, both hands. Why don't you give up that badge, Dan? A few days and those cowhands will be heading back for Texas. What am I supposed to do in the meantime, hide? As long as the marshal gave me the right to wear this badge, I'm the law, and right or wrong when I say stands. Well, mostly you've been wrong. And posting that gun-checking notice was your biggest mistake. I did it for the good of the town. You can lie to yourself, Dan, but not to me. The law has to be respected. It never will be when a man makes it suit his own purpose. Suppose those Texans do ride out of here without any more trouble. You think that'll be the end of it? I think so. Well, you're making it awful tough on the marshal when he gets back. Those cow hands will pass the word along to the other men driving cattle herds into North Fork. And they'll ride in here looking to pick up where the Texans left off. When a town gets a mean name, it draws mean customers. Got a message for you, boy. Keeley's revoking your gun law. Said that if you want to try to enforce it, he'd be waiting. Well, you tell him he won't have to wait long, because I'll be there. I was hoping you'd say that. Some of the boys are betting that you'd weasel out. Thompson must have lost his touch. Never thought he'd want to gun a kid. I don't know what you do when a blowfly bothers you, mister. But me, I squash it. And so does Keeley. Don't think about it too long, Marshal. Me and the boys would be mighty disappointed if you change your mind. I said I'd be there, and I will. Dan, you're not going to go. I'm going. Lucas! If he wants to commit suicide, there's nothing I can do about it. Healy Thompson's big reputation doesn't bother me. I took that cow hand, and I'll take him. You were lucky. An experienced gunslinger would have cut you down before you even cleared leather. Lucas knows what he's talking about. Act sensible. I still think I can take him. So there's no sense in putting him off, is there? Wait a minute, Dan. Plenty of time to get your head shot off. Sit down and think it over. Sit down. Where are you going, Lucas? I'll be back. confident I am, you can hold it. Anybody else want to make a bet? What about you, mister? I'm giving five to one the marshal doesn't get a chance to fire off a shot. I don't bet on murder. Hello, McCain. Have a seat. I see you're still carrying that rifle. Man gets himself a habit, it's hard to break. Yeah, from what I heard since I saw you last, that habit has earned you quite a reputation. I'm not proud of it, Thompson. But at least it was honestly earned. Well, what is that supposed to mean? It means I never deliberately pulled the trigger against a man who didn't have a chance. If you're talking about that marshal, he brought it on himself. He's just a kid who thinks he has to prove he's a man. You know he doesn't have a chance with you in a gunfight. There's already been one futile killing. Why have another? Let the boy out, Keeley. I almost wish I could. It's too late to back down now. 
It's not too late. You can take your boys and ride out of town. <laughs> you think they'd ride with me if I did that? Asking favors don't come easy for me, Thompson. But I'm asking for one now. Like I said, it's too late. Besides, once I start a play, I never back down. All right, if that's the way you want it. I got no fight with you, McCain. Don't get in the way. Not a person in town would blame you for not showing up. Yeah, but I gotta live with myself. So I might as well get it over with. Dan, being you're determined to go through with this, I'll tell you a few things that might help. Walk down to the church and come back up the street toward the saloon. That'll put the sun on your back in his face. Another thing, uh, watch his eyes. They're the tip off he's gonna draw. And, uh, Drop your gun belt a few inches. Anything else I should know? A great deal, but it's too late for that now. and a good cigar. Here, hold it for me. All right, kids, your move. Take off your guns, Thompson. I'm gonna give you the jump on me, son. Go ahead, draw. How bad is it, Lucas? Oh, it's not too bad, Will. But you better get the doctor. Thompson! Right or wrong, that gun law is still in effect. I think you better do like the marshal wanted and take yours off. You're a good man with that rifle, McCain, but not that good. Maybe not. I said I had no fight with you, McCain. Now, don't make me... Pay. Take off your gun belt! You could have killed me, McCain. Why didn't you? You could have killed the boy. Why didn't you? You men saddle up. We're riding for home. on the test. Got the third highest mark in the class. And I didn't get into any trouble today. I minded my own business. And boy, here's some hot candy for you. Thanks, Paul. Anything happen in town? What? Everything go all right in town. See, Mark, uh, sometimes it's easier to give advice than to take it. <laughs> That's what I was telling Skinny when he tried to stop me from taking a poke at Jeff. Well, that's just what I said. Skinny should have minded his own business. <laughs> Let's go home. <laughs>